What's up everyone, how's it going? This is Wodge. Hope you guys are all doing well. So this is going to be the second part of our epic uh, 6800K slash GTX 1080 water cool build. And here we're going to focus on specifically the performance results out of uh, this uh, PC gaming rig right over here. So when it comes to the overclock, we didn't really go too crazy. The copy of the 6800K that I have really can't go past 4.4 uh, gigahertz at 1.4 volts. But at these current settings, I'm definitely very confident that we can maintain this overclock for a long period of time and that's one of the big advantages that you're going to have with a custom water cooling loop. At Ido you're only looking at about 25 degrees C which is very cool and at 100% load after about 45 minutes of prime 95 the peak temperature was around 74 degrees C and on average it hover around 68 degrees C for most of that time. Now with our water cooling rig and our overclock, we're getting significant performance bumps from the stock frequency. So if you look at the Geekbench 3 benchmark result, as you can see over here, we're getting over 24,000 points on the multi-core side and a solid uh, 4,077 points on uh, the uh, single threaded performance. And you can see uh, based on the stock frequency settings, it's uh, definitely a decent performance bump from uh, the overclock and the water cool setup. And the same thing is kind of mirror on the Cinebench R15 benchmark where we're getting over 1300 points on the 4.4 gigahertz overclock and the stock frequency scores around 1100 points. Now in addition to that one of the big highlights of this system is definitely the uh, read and write performance thanks to the Samsung 950 Pro M.2 PCI Express SSD. We're getting well over excess of uh, 2500 megabytes a second in terms of read performance and 1500 megabytes per second in terms of right so with these kind of performance levels everything is going to be really fluid and really dynamic certainly your applications will load up faster as well as your boot time will definitely decrease now, one of the big advantages of having a water cool setup is that you typically don't need a lot of fans. Now, we have four uh, 120 millimeter fans on just the radiator. There's no fans for the GPU. There's no fans for the CPU. So we can dictate uh, the RPM speed. And if we want a more quieter setup, we can uh, lower the RPM and it will uh, decrease the overall noise factor if you want a really quiet system. And even with this open frame design of our thermal take case, our maximum acoustic noise level doesn't go beyond 38 decibels even at full gaming load or even if you're editing videos or photos anything intense with a water cool setup uh, pretty much your temperature is uh, consistent across all all areas of the loop so whether you're running your GPU hot or your CPU hot the temperature should be fairly similar and even at a full gaming load uh, the temperature on average is about 55 degrees C in the loop itself with the GPU mainly being taxed uh, at the highest level and obviously the CPU comes into play when you're playing uh, different games and obviously we discuss uh, the uh, maximum thermal capacity of our CPU performance earlier on so one of the great advantages of a full-on water cool setup like this is that you don't have to really make a system very loud in order to make it perform right. Now when it comes to the graphical performance of this PC we did do it a little bit of overclocking on our GTX 1080 not by a huge factor since we can't really control the voltage at a higher level too much so uh, the boost frequency is around 1700 megahertz on the stock uh, GTX 1080s we push it to around 2000 a megahertz so not a crazy crazy overclock but this is going to give us excellent stability and pretty good thermal dynamics based on our initial testing right now and we're just going to take a look at the side by side advantage that you get with our overclock setting the first thing we're going to take a look at is synthetic benchmark the time spy dx12 3d mark vantage uh, benchmark as you can see over here a slight uh, bump in uh, performance with our overclock setting getting around a 7703 three versus the stock frequencies on our 1080 from MSI gets around 7393. Now our overclock also yields a slightly better performance when it comes to the Unigen uh, Valley benchmark. We're getting about uh, 107.2 average frames per second on that benchmark and in the same scenario just with the stock frequencies we're getting about 101.4 average FPS. Now what we're going to do is run through a couple of different DirectX 11 and 12 uh, titles 
and we're going to again uh, show you guys the performance both at the 1080p and at the 4k uh, settings so you have a good idea in terms of how this uh, system performs at those different types of resolutions so let's get right into it Now, in summary, on average, you get about 8 to 10% uh, performance bump with our overclock setting. And obviously, with our water cool setup, things run a lot more efficiently and at lower temperatures, which is definitely going to increase overall uh, performance and the longevity of all the components that you're using in your PC. That's one of the great things about a water cool setup. And uh, of course, uh, you can probably get very similar performance if you're going to be cooling by air, but obviously, your overall noise levels will increase and it certainly won't look as cool as uh, something like what we have over here with all the hard tubing uh, piping going on and if you like this video please give us a thumbs up really helps us out tremendously check out the links in the description down below for all the detailed information about uh, the pc specs and if you haven't watched our uh, build guide of how we created this pc definitely do so and watch part one but really on that guys that's really it thanks again for your support Thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. Take care.